All right, howdy folks. Um, I got a couple of friends of mine asked to make a brief video about um, my rack, uh, my server rack at home. Um, let me give you a step back here. Um, it is a, whoa, all right. Uh, full size, um, full size net shelter from APC. Uh, I have all the doors, I have all the bits and pieces. Oh, I forgot to put the top back on the Plex server. Um, I just did a little video on the Plex server, so I forgot to put it back together, but hey. All right, so top down, um, top thing here is, this is my power distribution and automatic switch. Um, so basically everything in my rack comes through here. Um, and this is where it ties in mains power to the UPS power. Um, sorry, let me, uh, should have cleaned up first. I have three APC 1500 uh, UPSs. Two are uh, in series and one is solo. The one on the bottom is the solo one and it is dedicated to running um, my switching and my Starlink and my PF sensor router. Um, okay, so top of that, that's basically what that guy is it also has the logging um and i have a syslog server that captures those logs and will give me some information as far as like you know um it doesn't give you like your use per plug but i can control the individual plugs through the app that it has um but it doesn't like do individual metering it meters everything um, so I don't know if that's like an upgrade or a different one or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, the next one here is, so mains comes into this and then goes to this. This is just power conditioning. Um, I live on a horse ranch, so we have some, uh, power fluctuations once in a while that, um, would, you know, basically cause a whole bunch of servers to reboot. And the, the fewer times that I have to use my power switch and activate UPSs, the longer the UPSs will last, right? Um, so that, that's pretty cool, pretty critical. And it also gives me a, you know, oh crap button. Um, I can shut literally everything off, just hard down. Um, which, uh, you know, never had to do, but you know, it's there. Next is my Abosynth DSR 1020. Um, uh, IP KVM. Um, I do use this thing a ton. Love these things. The little adapters that it takes to use them. A little spendy. Luckily, I have. Uh, I picked up a few of these things, and I picked up a few. I picked up one on eBay, and I bought the like an eight port off of a guy once for a client, and he sent me like thirty adapters. Didn't even say anything about it. Semi 30 adapters, just, you know, I guess he wanted to get rid of them. So, hey, win, right? Um, it was really cool of him. But uh, next down is my PF Sense router. Um, I use PF Sense and have for a very long time. Um, and my PF Sense router is doing basically everything that I can configure it to do while being behind carrier grade NAT. Um, you know, I can do VPN through it and all that kind of stuff, but I don't. Um, but uh, it's a uh, eight core, 16 gigs of RAM. There's a little drive, you can see it right there. Um, and by the way, if you have a, a PF Sense router, don't put an SSD in it. It will, uh, it'll eat that thing up. And when it fails, it's not gonna tell you it's failing. It's just gonna start failing. Um, I'm sure the you know, pros out there will be like, oh, this is how you do that. And I have no idea how to do it. So whatever. Um, next down is the V-Box. Um, it, uh, it, I use this specifically just to run really old VMs, um, from like, you know, various platforms. So it has, you know, ESXi installed on it. It has Hyper-V. It has, um, you know, Prox. Uh, you name it if there's a vm host software thing it's on there um i keep it powered off just because you know i'm trying to save some electricity next down is dev box i also call this my hate box um 
anytime I get a drive where I don't know the uh, contents of the drive and it might be a possible problem, I uh, put it in here, you know, keyless or toolless uh, thing, boot the thing up. This is, uh, I mean, it's just like a little Core i3 um, with like eight, I think there's maybe, maybe eight gigs of RAM in it. If There should be eight gigs of RAM, but um, just enough to be able to like spin up a drive, take a look at it. Um, and then if I need to recover a drive and it just needs to run and run and run for a very long time, I can put another drive in and then read off one drive and recover to another, uh, therefore, you know, minimizing the number of writes that are going to go back on the disks that I'm trying to recover, right? So that's kind of what that, that box is for. This is my, uh, I call this one Davy Jones. That is where I, uh, sail the seven seas <laughs> inside joke those of you who get it will get it if not too bad uh next down is my uh dell power edge r610 this is an all ssd based get in here it's all ssds not like the server grade ssds right it's just like samsung ssd also oh, samsung ssds um it's powered off right now it is super fast. I love this thing. It has like half a terabyte of RAM in it, so it takes forever to boot. But when it does, it's great. Uh, it's just really loud. Um, but that is actually what I use as my VM host uh, for everything else. There, there are two servers that are in here right now aren't even commissioned or anything yet. Um, but it runs, um, you know, Windows Server 2019, fully registered, everything legal, copy, all that good stuff. Um, but all the VMs basically live here and then all the storage lives down here on, on, uh, the, the server I call Irasu. Um, so yeah, Arenal is my, my VM host. Um, the next one down is a, uh, it's a PowerEdge R710. Um, it's, you know, just your, uh, regs. Six drives, um, they're, they are SATA drives, um, regular SATA, SATA drives, um, and it's, that's like my, my guinea pig, right, uh, uh, for what I do, sometimes learning how to do something in Active Directory isn't great to do on a, um, client's network or system or Active Directory structure, so this is where I go to learn. Um, so that's kind of like my lab PC. Um, next one down is the... Uh, this is the uh, uh, R720... Um, is it DW? WD? I can't remember, but... Um, you know, 12 bay. Those are all... Um, they're all labeled with their serial number, the last four of their serial number on there. Um, there are two drives internal that are the operating system, and it has two little, two SSDs um, as the operating system that's in there, but uh, that is storage. Um, so what I do is I keep all my personal stuff, like my mission-critical data, um, you know, my family photos and taxes and, and documentation and stuff like that, right? Um, I keep I keep that here. Um, so it's kind of separated from everything else. It's not, you know, it would, it's not in my playhouse of VMs and, and you know, doing anything crazy. So, it, you know, it's, it's nice and static and, and uh, just, you know, does its job. Um, these down here are uh, HP... Uh, DL380, this is a Gen, oh, sorry, this is a Gen 9, down there is a Gen 8. Um, I have issues with my rack mount for the disc, uh, disc shelf, um, but eventually that'll be brought back up, because right now I can't put my Silverstone case right side up, um, but eventually that'll be brought back up, and I'll suck up some of this space that's extra in here so I can kind of, you know, get things back and, and organized, um, back working the way I like them, but, um, right now, this is, it's got drives in it, 
they are 1.2 terabyte drives. Um, I think there's only four in each, right? Yeah, there's only four in each um, because I did the, uh, I did a, they have um, Windows Server 2019 on them. Uh, but I think I might take one of the two, they're both dual processor. Um, so I might take the one that has maybe slightly better energy efficiency and turn that into my Unraid because I, I think the clock is ticking on my um, Silverstone Unraid box. I love Unraid, don't get me wrong, but the drives in there aren't getting any younger. Um, the, the, the processor that's in there is like a atom based, but it's like a 1.5 gigahertz, but it's uh, eight cores with tons of ECC RAM in it too. So it does really, really well. Um, and it, uh, uh, you know, it's great for Unraid, right? Cause Unraid, you're only going to get single disc performance. So I don't need anything like massively performative, you know, for performative. Is that even a word? I'm just making shit up. I don't know. But, um, so, you know, but I, I'll take one of the two, probably turn them into an Unraid server and uh then attach that to the disk shelf um and we'll kind of you know go from there but that's basically the uh server side of my rack and i'll take you around to the back before this video gets too long and go top down again um so on top there you'll notice uh, a bunch of these just go right back into the cage uh, or into the rack that that's my that's where my kvm attaches so it gives me some points where i can just plug stuff in like this to go back onto my workbench over back there behind me um so i can use kvm and i don't have to have like you know monitors sitting around and stuff like that i love that because i just grab an old laptop from work that somebody's recycling or whatever and you know, install Windows 10 on it on a little SSD and it works until it's totally dead and then I frisbee it, you know, and then it's done. <laughs> so, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, the rest of this, uh, whatever is patched in up here at the top are all computers. So it's the networking side of whatever is in the rack. Um, a lot of them aren't populated, but uh, I think it's like I'm up to like number of our, around 10 or so. Uh, is populated with stuff. The rest of it, no, no the rest of it doesn't look like it's populated. But um, uh, 48 port HP 1810-48G switch. Um, you know, just regular switch, nothing fancy there. Um, 24 port uh, Unify PoE switch. Um, runs everything else anything that needs PoE. Um, one of the things I do with it is I actually prefer to do all my VLANing through there because I have trouble sometimes with uh, my VLANs kind of like just ceasing or halting um, from HP. And I, I don't know if it's maybe HP uses its own kind of VLAN, uh, you know, settings or something like that where it, it just doesn't work very well. But so anything that needs to be VLAN is plugged directly into the uh, sorry, plug directly into the uh, to the um, Unify switch. It works great. Uh, a little cloud key there. Eventually, I'll get the rack mount when I get you know when I have an extra hundred bucks that I'm willing to throw away. Down below here, this is my 10 gig SFP plus switch. Um, this thing is super loud, but um, I have 10 gig Ethernet or 10 gig DAC cables to most of the devices in the rack that do any sort of like large data transfer or anything like that. Um, so it's great to be able to like turn on that, that switch and uh, you know, do file transfers over 10 gig, especially when they're quite large or backups or something like that. So it's great, um, but it's only within the rack here. It doesn't, it doesn't travel outside at all. 
Um, I have all the little cable management pieces and stuff for the Dell. Um, I love the cable management side. I mean, I know it's kind of a mess right now, but I need to go through this weekend and clean it up again. Um, but I don't have any for the HPs. Um, I know there's some no-name brands ones and, you know, HP, but they're just so expensive. The, the HP ones, they're new. I mean, they're like 200 some odd dollars. I'd rather just spend that on storage or what have you. Um, you'll notice some of the HP switches like this one here. I think it's plugged into power. No, it's not even plugged into power. Um, so it's kind of, you know, decommission time right now, but one of the bottom is connected. That's the back of the bottom HP switch because uh, it is kind of the newest edition. Um, one of the things that I do is, and when I get around to it, I will power in the, the other HP there. Um, but this digital loggers, um, this is a ethernet controlled power switch. Um, and it allows you basically to turn on and off devices um, basically through your internet. Uh, but actually like hard power them off so they don't they don't communicate at all now that means you lose uh you know ilo or idrac or or uh you know you, you lose your 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 ability to manage things from that perspective but um you know even when your server is plugged in and turned off uh it still consumes so i'm just trying to kind of limit the consumption and these things kind of help me do that i do have two of them one on the bottom is just mostly for like experimental stuff um sorry uh for you know or like i i, I had planned to move like the networking stuff the stuff that doesn't have dual power supplies to it but i need to find a little, a little bit better way to distribute power within the rack uh, i do have this you know, power strip going all on with the side and everything. And there's not a whole lot plugged into it, but, um, you know, just need to get the right length power cables and stuff like that. I hate having to like coil power cables or, or this, right? Joining two power cables together with like an extension. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Um, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Um, but that's pretty much the networking side of the rack. Um, you know, uh, there's my, uh, there's my, my, my little, my newest toy. Um, Starlink, it's working, it's in bypass mode. Um, PFSense works great. Unify works great. Uh, all that good stuff. You just have to be patient and do the, do your homework and, and, uh, you know, set things up right the first time and, get a lot more enjoyment out of your network instead of, you know, everybody at the house complaining and people, you know, complaining that they can't connect and all that good stuff. So but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. See ya.